And we are now live, so good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night service, Mystery Baptist Church. Tonight we're going to be studying uh, what we call the wind, grow, and send. Here in the church we're actually going to be developing the wind, grow, and send chart. Does everybody have, uh, you should have a bulletin and you should have a copy of this chart, but yours is not filled out. Yours is blank. Uh, So does everybody have that? And um, if you're listening online, really you just might want to jot down some of the notes that we're taking here. In the bulletin, you'll see on the Wednesday sermon section, there's only three blocks or three spaces, the wind, the grow, and the send. I'm going to give you some cultures of those areas as we go through. And if we don't get through all of it within our allotted time tonight, excuse me, we'll finish it next week. But I just wanted to give you the culture and then also have some discussion as we as we create what is going to become known as our wind, send, and, or rather, wind, grow, and send chart. Uh, It's going to be something that, Lord willing, of course, I may not do everything I say I'm going to do, but Lord willing, uh, I will get it filled out and plaster it all around the church so that you recognize it as something that we are uh, actually working towards and trying to remind ourselves of the vision. Uh, But let us go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will go over our win, grow, and sin chart. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and mercy, the rain too, Father. And we thank you for those who gather and join us on uh, by way of technology when they can't be here. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to share your word, to share your plan, and to sit down as a church, as a body, and prepare and plan for what is to come. Lord, I just pray that we will be able to do that today, and I pray you'll guide us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the first thing, when, you want to jot down, I know you have a couple things, so I want to make sure you, I'll tell you where to write these down in your bulletin under uh, when or bring them in. You'll just want to make a note uh, that this is the culture of friendliness. So whether you write it in your bulletin or whether you jot it down on your circle chart, either one's fine, just wherever you can keep track of it. But culture of friendliness is something that we want to create here at Smith Street Baptist Church. I think I listened last week uh, to you on Wednesday night for a little bit, as much as I could, while we were trying to, to do some things, and I kept getting the feeling that that we're 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 almost afraid to come across as too negative. We don't want to spend every night saying we're we're bad, we can't do this right, we can't do that right, we can't do that right. I heard some of the answers that came back to Brother David when he was asking questions, and and some of those were you know, well, we're we're doing better than we were. And, and I'm all for that, I'm all for that. But if we're going to move forward, then we've got to do better than, we've got to do better than we are. So let's celebrate that we're doing better than we were, let's keep moving to do better than we are, right? So that's just normal progression of how we want to move forward. So don't think of this as a negative thing. I say that because we, we do have a culture of friendliness at this church. Uh, but it is a culture that can grow and can develop into a better church friendliness, if you will, culture, if you will. So that's the idea is to go forward and get uh, better at these things. We, we need a culture of invitation. So this is the second culture you want to jot down, the culture of invitation. And then I'm going to come back and explain some of this in a minute. And then the third culture within the winning category is the culture of mission-mindedness. So we want to have a culture of friendliness, a culture of invitation, and a culture of mission-mindedness. Connie uh, is going to be going on a mission trip to uh, Adrian this year as a counselor. How many years now? 19 years now? 19 years she's been going as a counselor. And um, she's going to be going with a bunch of children from our communities around the associational area. Uh, She's a missionary. She may not be a missionary going overseas, but she's a missionary who will be traveling in the Judea area, You've got, or in the Samaria area, rather. And so she'll be going to Judea, local Samaria, and, uh, or Jerusalem. I did that back. Jerusalem, it was Judea. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So you've got Judea. She's going out into that area. It's not way out there, but it's not locally in our backyard either. And she's going to be doing some work there with the children. Uh, we have uh, Kristen Sharp is going to be going to Haiti in a few weeks. And so she's actually going to the ends of the earth as she goes over to Haiti to do ministry. Is it the same week? Okay, the same week. And uh, also going on that same week will be wind-shaped camps for communities. So there'll be a lot of missionaries going right over here to Sally Meadows to do Jerusalem missionary work right here in our Jerusalem and maybe theirs if they're local. 
in our own backyard. So uh, opportunities for camps going on this summer is just another way to be missional. As a church, we want to be mission-minded. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute because I'm going to give you the bulletin answers, then we're going to put the bulletin away. The grow section, we want a culture of discipleship. So in the grow section, just write down culture of discipleship. Over the last few weeks, we've shared all the scriptures with you leading up to this. We actually won't do any scriptural reading tonight because we've shared it as we've gone along. So just so you recognize that we are kind of branching a bunch of studies together weeks, week to week. Uh, send them out in the send is a culture of ministry. A culture of ministry. You could argue that's a culture, culture of missions, but not everything is a mission. Everything can be a ministry. And I'll explain that hopefully in detail as we go. So does anybody need me to repeat the cultures? Everybody got those? All right. Well, you can put your bulletin aside then so that you can focus in on your circle chart. And you have blanks. Now, these blanks are blank not because they have correct answers that are hidden. It's because you have to fill in the blanks. You have to put in the culture of our church. In other words, it fits this. So what do you think when, the top of the 12 o'clock position on your chart, what do you think when has to do with? What would win have to do with? Winning who to what? Yeah, the lost to Jesus, right. Winning the lost to Jesus. So we win them, and that, what did we call that in the bulletin? We call that the bring them in. So we, I hope you were making that face to Levi and not me. <laughs> but I, I'm just going to trust that you were making baby faces at him, Okay. Because I looked up and it looked like you were looking directly at me and I thought, you've lost your mind, Ed. <laughs> so whew, that's, a, that's a load off my mind. Uh, the win category, bring them in. All right. So we want to be attractional. And if we're going to be attractional and bring them in, we need, to know, we need to note some things we can do that bring people into the church as an op- with an opportunity that once they get here, you know, they'll be able to, to be one for Christ. So give us some ideas, give me some examples, if you will, of some s- types of things we do or could do that would be something we could use to bring people into the church, physically bring them into the church. Dedication. Yes. The baby oh, okay, I got you. All right, good. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Good. Because I'm thinking, yeah, they got to be dedicated, but... So, okay, baby dedication, definitely. So we can write that down in a blank. It doesn't matter what blank, and I'm going to jot these down too. But baby dedication, that's right. That's a way to bring people in that might not otherwise go to church. Um, that, that works with uh, baptism services, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It does, it does, yes. So baptism services. So let's, let's put down baptism services. What's another way we bring people into the church or could bring people? We don't have to do it, but ways we do could bring people into the church. Huh? VBS? Yes. All right, what else? I want to fill all these blanks in on our chart. We got five more. Your life tonight, that could be a part. It could be. It could be. Technology, maybe. 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 Ed said I was live tonight. So hopefully people, you know, we had 16 people listening Sunday. That's the highest we've had uh, in ever. And it was not, we've been doing this for a little, lot longer than it feels, about a quarter now. What's, what's another way we could bring people into the church? The backpack giveaway. Uh... Yeah, <clears throat> the backpack bash. Okay. Three more ideas that we could use to bring people into the church. Food and technology are true, but I want to recognize that we can incorporate food and technology into any of these, into most of these. Like we're doing the baby dedication, and after that we're doing a meal. So, um, because I I think most of our church has forgotten or doesn't know where the fellowship hall is. So we're going to try to get everybody back down there once in a while. So... So I'm going to take technology. Heather made me think that, Ed. She, she bumped your technology off. Technology and food are definitely things we can do. Um, but I'm thinking more along the line of, of uh, unless you're going to say, come and eat with us, which is very, very possible we could do that. Um, so we'll put food down. 
under the, with the understanding that you might come and eat with us like the community breakfast we did for um, Easter sunrise. Concerts? Or, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would probably fall under food and maybe some type of special backpack bash event type thing. I don't know if we would, now, I'm not saying we wouldn't, but if I understand you correctly, I'm not sure if we would ever have, hey, everybody come to the church for our annual cakewalk. Um, although I'll tell you, if more churches did that, I'd go to more churches. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe there's an idea there. There might be an idea. Let's let's put that under backpack bash, cakewalk, uh, even concerts. We'll leave concerts separate, but even concert kind of uh, gives us the idea of events. Now remember, we want the the attractional ideas, the attractional things that people will say, "Hey, I'm going to go to that because that's unlike anything I've ever seen before." So maybe you're onto something, Linda. I don't know with a cakewalk. I don't know. Yeah, fall festival. Yep. Fall festivals. So we got baby dedication, baptism, VBS, food events, uh, which we'll put the cakewalk there too. And backpack bash, concerts, uh, fall festival. Some of these could intertwine together, but what's one more, uh, one more idea that we could do? Yes, yes. He said revival, Easter musicals, sunrise service, and those are types of things that we could, uh, could uh, kind of put them underneath the category of, of evangelical events, you know, 6E strategy type stuff, evangelical events. That's right. All right, the last blank, or if you have to add a blank, you may have to add a blank because I drew some line stuff. If you have to add a blank or, or even if you don't, it's okay. This is just, a, you know, you're not turning this in. Um, but draw, jot down there uh, the, the 101. 101. And 101 is, uh, is actually the last thing a person does before they move into the growing. Or better yet, maybe it should be the first thing they do when they move into the growing. So let, let's, let's not put it in the wind. Let's put it in the grow, and we'll put 101. Now, in the grow section, if we've done our job, if we've had a culture of friendliness, a culture of invitation, and a culture of missional mindedness, so we've been missional on our outreach and events, then one of the things that we, we will see are people coming in and people sticking, right? People coming in, and they'll see this as what um, Ken Hemphill calls a Velcro church. So it's a church that people want to be a part of, they stick to. Now, let me ask you something. What typically happens with people who get excited, come into a church, and then there's nothing going on? What do they typically do? They leave. Yeah, either that or they wave, But because everybody started waving. They, they leave, right? They head out the door. So we don't want to just have, though, a church that is, is fun or busy. We want to have a church that does what? Right, and how do we get there? What's the next circle block? The next circle section. Grow. So how are we going to grow? Well, I said let's do the 101. So what do you think the 101 is? Well, it is. It's the first step in grow. Somebody comes in, we want them to get into a 101. Yes, but what is a 101? Well... It might be a new salvation. It might be a, new, a salvation class for newly saved. If we have somebody who gets saved and baptized, we should get them into a, bapti- a, a salvation class, a, a new beginner's class, or a new believer's class. Hey, there it is. I couldn't come up with it. A new believer's class. So we want 101 to kind of be the new believers. Now that could go in that area of winning, because remember our opportunity here is to get people into the church to win them to Christ. So if we win people to Christ we then want to get them into a new believer's class. Why? Because they need to be equipped quickly to understand that the enemy's coming after them, right? He's going to attack. It never fails. I see it all the time. People get saved and the enemy attacks. And I've got to the point now where I say to them, hey, when you get saved, the enemy's going to attack. Just be ready. Be prepared. So what would the next level be? What would the next thing be? Well, if they do New Believers 101 
then we could begin what we call core classes or foundational classes where we get them into 201, 301, 401 type of opportunities as they move their way around the circle. Now, that's an education area, and we've not discussed that, so I'm not saying that we do that, although in the back of my mind I do have some, I have had for a long time some thoughts of how we could do that, but we're just not there yet. But what are some other ways that we can guarantee a person grows? So get them in a group. Get them in a group. So that's something you want to write down is get them in a group. Because that group could be the tribe women's group. That group could be the men's Sunday school class. That group could be the Sunday night men's group that doesn't have a cool name like tribe. It's just a men's group on Sunday night. It could be um, the... Uh, a small group that meets in someone's home. I mean, those are the ideas. So we want to get them in a group. Now, what is, what, what is one way we were doing that for a while that we haven't in a while? What is one way that we were using to get people in after their first visit that we haven't done in a while? The breakfast, yeah. Yeah, we had the breakfast. Oh, yeah, we had the new members class first, then it evolved into more of a breakfast class, and really that kind of stopped, and, that, and I, I know why it stopped, but it's not important, It'll, we'll get it going again, but, but what's important is that it just it kind of stopped, and what we have are people come in, and they, they, they need to feel like they have a chance to be connected, right? So we want to get them into the group. Exactly, want them to feel involved. I want to be involved. What's it now? Let's say they get into the group. In this whole process of growing, what's something we want to discover about them? Yeah, their talents and, and maybe their gifts, right? So we want that spiritual gift discovery. We want to discover where are they talented or where do they have some talents? Where are they gifted? Where are they spiritually gifted? There's a difference, and we want to know how they might fit. So. We want that to be a part of that growing process. What's another thing that we want to see them doing? We want to give them opportunities to do when it comes. Now remember, we're creating a culture of discipleship, which means we're trying to see people become discipled in the disciplines of Christ or following Christ. So you have to think back to what are some disciplines of a Christian. Yes, but more specifically, yes. And so, what what are some ways that we can equip them to to become disciplined in prayer and Bible reading? How? I know, right? I say that all the time, but <laughs> that sounded almost like a pastor. Uh, uh, what are those tweets I used to do? That sounded like that. What'd you say? You need to write that down and put your initials by it. That's a. Uh, Said the more you learn, the more you're eager to learn, or something. I don't know what you said, but equip with the materials. How? How can we equip them? How do we equip them right now in a very uh, outside of their classes? How can we equip them? Give them devotionals. Right. We got a ton of devotions. Here's what the church has to get used to. When you meet somebody new in the church, you ought to be giving them a devotional. You ought to be, hey, well, welcome to our class. Have you picked up one of the devotions? No, I haven't yet. Oh, well, here, this is a great way to stay in God's Word. You should be able to take one of these devotions and give it to them. And then you could take it one step further. You could give them another devotion, give them two, and encourage them to give that one to somebody. You're already preparing them to go into the world as a missionary, and they just got here. You know, you're already getting them to do that. You're, so so you, want to, you want to equip them. So, so we're going to put equip them. With tools. What's another way? What if they say, uh, 
you know, I really enjoyed the pastor's preaching this morning. Um, I wish I could hear him more during the week. (laughs) Or, I don't know if you can go to the website, because I don't think we've got it going on the website. Yeah, that's the old website. No, you can still get the one, but you have it on now. If you click on the little thing on the side, you can actually go in and get the audio of the sermon. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's still there. 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 Yeah, it's still Okay, good, good. That answers that. <laughs> Levi didn't agree. <laughs> what about, uh, so, so the website's one area. What's another? Well, don't send too many of them my way. <laughs> no, I mean, what, what, what if they, remember what they said. They said, I'd, I'd like to hear more of him. Pre-. It's not that they like to hear me, but they want to hear more of the word. They like the delivery. Hmm? Come on Wednesday nights. Come to a Sunday school class. If they're a man, you know, or were a woman, or wait, um, what else? Huh? The app, the most, the least technology, technological guy in the room said it, the app. You're not the, you're not a guy though. You're the least technological woman. So, but exactly. What is an app? It's first half of an apple. The app is a, is a great tool because on the app you can get all of those sermons. You can get every teaching from Wednesday night. You can get every sermon from the last, um, I think the last quarter from that app. And if they, if they want that many more, they can go back and we have the archives of all the other ones from the old website or the old service. So give them access to the app. Tell them how to download it. Um, what about being connected? How can they be connected here? We want them to be, a, this is kind of equipping too, but we want them to be connected. So what's something, if you have a new person come in, what's something you should encourage them to do? Fill out a connection card. And what should they receive every multiple times a week? If they fill out a connection card. Don't tell them that. <laughs> they might not get that many phone calls. Not several times a week. They'll get one. How about, how about the email? I wonder how many people really read an email. Send a lot of emails. I just don't think. Because you don't get an email. That's right. But Connie should come over and read you the email on her phone. So, there you go. What, what, so you, you, you get them to fill out that connection card. I mean, because we have 78, 79, something like that emails, addresses saved. Now, some of those people don't go here anymore, and I wonder sometimes, what do they do with them? It'd be just as easy to say, I don't want them anymore, and and that's all they got to do, and we'll take them off the list. But if they haven't done that, I'm going to send them the emails anyway. So you you get the newsletter in your email, you get the the, uh, uh, weekly updates, anytime there's a a, a response that you need um, from an email, you'll get it. What's some way you can get access, not using the app, but you can get instant text on your phone? It's amazing. It's amazing how much you don't know. And when I say that, I don't mean that the way it sounds. It's amazing how much... One of the things I'm working through right now is, is trying to make sure you know more stuff. Than, because we have a lot of stuff that is apparently people just don't know about. Um, we have the Remind 101 app. And what you do is if you will text that... And <clears throat> don't say that because I think it's been in the bulletin. But... Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. It is on the door going out that way. Yeah, it's not on the bulletin. All right, well, it's coming up. Um, I realize this week a lot. there's a lot of stuff we still haven't... You don't even have to download it. All, if she can text, all she has to do is text the word at, the at sign, at SSBC events, plural, events, to 81010. And if she does that, every time I send out a mass text... You'll get a mass text that says SSBC colon, and it'll say whatever it is that you, you need to get. So, and it's on the door going out that way. Um, it's, going to, it's also in the newsletter. So you can pick up a newsletter in the back, or you can get it in your email. And they have been sent out already, so it's, uh, it's all available for you. And that way, you can be reminded of stuff. For example, 
Uh, if we, on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock or so, I usually send out a reminder of something that's coming up that morning. So if we have, um, you know, if we're doing the, the toiletry, for example, I may send out a text that says, don't forget to bring your toiletries for God's storehouse. Or, um, you know, it's baby dedication day, don't forget to bring your appetite and join us afterwards for the meal, or something like that. That's correct, yes. And just invited everybody to come to services tonight. And I typically do that sometime around 5.30 or 6 on, on Wednesdays to say, hey, don't forget we got church. Because I feel like people, will, I don't know how many people are going, oh, I'm glad he sent me a text. It's Wednesday, I forgot. But, you know, still. Sent out some personal texts, too, tonight asking people to come. So, um, but you get the idea. You get the idea. Uh, something else. Two things I really want you to, to, well, I'm going to run through them real quick, and then we're going to finish this, and we'll do the last section, which is big, talking about the culture of ministry, and we'll do that next week. Here's, here's where uh, I want you to write these last two down in this section. We want them to start serving. We want to see people serving, because it's not enough to be part of the body of Christ and to not be serving. He's fine. To not be serving in some way. To just be present is not enough. That's not what God's called us to. So we want people to start serving. And then the last one, which I can't believe no one said this, because if you know me, you know it's coming. Begin to give financially, (laughs) right? I'm going to say this to you, and this is not a complaint. This is just a reality. I have thought very hard, although I haven't run it up through council, and and I I want to do that first before I do this, so no no worries about that. Uh, But... I would like at some point to just take out, print out the breakdown of where we are at the six-month mark, which it may be at the end of June. Maybe they'll let me do that in July. Print it out on a Sunday morning, have everybody hold copies and take 10 minutes and explain why there's so much red ink. If you look at your bulletin or you look at your newsletter, red is bad. And when we see red, it means we're in the hole that much. And I was doing the financial update today where we're about $2,000 in the hole right now for the year. And I went, this is what I said to myself. I, I actually said it out loud, Ed. I said, who is not giving? <laughs> you know, because month to month, week to week, we're only a few hundred dollars short. If everybody give five bucks here, ten bucks there that isn't given, we'd get closer. We might not get there, but we'd get closer. And it's beyond just the need. God said to do it, and God will bless you for it. So, but I try not to get upset. I used to get upset about that stuff. Now I don't get upset about it because I recognize that God has it under control, and He's going to take care of all of it. But we have an expectation of believers that they will be obedient to Christ. And a maturing believer is one who eventually begins to give financially. Sometimes that's the last thing they do as they process through this bottom part of the circle, and that's okay. Coming off of that, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes people can't see past their bills. And I get that. I used to be there. And my wife used to be there. And so we understand that. But it's simply helping everybody get to that point when they get there. Whenever they get there, loving them until they get there and loving them through that process because every one of us needed that love as we moved forward. So, and I will say this, um, I'm not concerned, I'm not scared. I just don't think there's a lot of people who realize just how important it is to drop that extra five or ten bucks in. And from a spiritual perspective, it's even more important. But with that being said, those are the things that we want to see you do as you go through the grow process and then you become the person who is on the sending process. And I've, used, I've broken this down a bunch of different ways as we've gotten to this on Wednesday nights. And this is another way of looking at it. And it's probably the way we'll adopt as we go forward with the, uh, just explaining it simply. But that is the sending stage. And next week we're going to talk about all the ways you can be involved in the sending ministry at Smith Street Baptist Church. Sending, not sinning. Sending. All right? I saw Linda get excited. She said, sending, yay. No, no, sending. All right, Brother David, you may have the podium. Thank you, brother. I mean, thank you all, and thank you, brother.